It's been quite a while since the invention of the internet, but it's pretty much widely still seen as both a positive and a negative thing. Along with all the conveniences that it brought with it, the internet brought a lot of dangers and risks as well. One of those dangers was the rise of online child predators. It was based on this new wave of people who had instantaneous access to their sickest desires to talk to or even meet up with children through the internet. Children were given access to platforms where they could meet people like this, and predators were given access to platforms where they could meet children. Essentially, the same tools that were being used for all of us to be able to talk to one another were suddenly being used by child predators. And it was streamlining the experience of finding, picking up, and molesting a child. In order to prove that these people have done something wrong, they don't actually have to meet up with a child. They just have to meet up under the impression that there's going to be a child there. And along with this very simple idea comes the new wave of predator catchers. Chris Hansen was just the first. He spawned over time an entire trend. There are tons of these channels all over the internet focused on catching these predators and exposing them to the community. And they all work in very different ways. Some of them are a little bit more hostile and aggressive, while others take a little bit more of a passive approach and communicate more with the police. It's really not fair to put them all into the same basket. And so for this video, I'm gonna be focusing mainly on a channel that is very, very popular called Dads Against Predators. Dads Against Predators is a group of dads who are all interested in stopping predators in their community. And they post these videos to their YouTube channel hoping that the community exposes them further and essentially takes up the slack from the police department that they feel are not sufficiently hunting down these predators and dealing with them. But as you'll hopefully come to agree with me, the practices that these individuals are using are less than optimal. And there's a lot to be said about whether or not that their efforts are actually helping. The question at the end of the day is, what is the objective? And admittedly, it doesn't matter if you're Chris Hansen or if you're one of these new child predator catchers, the objective in your head, the justification to yourself is always going to be that you're doing this for the greater good, that your efforts are helping to prevent child abuse. It's such a strong defense that it would seem impossible to critique these people, to pull them apart and say that what they're doing is wrong, wouldn't it? Wake. What's up, buddy? What's up, Wake? Who are you here to meet, bud? I'm in Lake. Lake? Yes. Oh, oh that's a good. That's a good little rhyme. So who are you here to meet, man? I ain't here to meet nobody. You ain't? No. Show, no, no, Show him his pictures, man. Show him his pictures. Now we I'm can have a maybe. conversation. Who the fuck are you? Guys? We're gonna. We're dads against predators, so we can have a conversation uh, about. Oh, it's funny. It's funny you're here to meet a 13 year old girl. The first thing you'll notice is that they usually encounter these people in the middle of businesses, in stores where people are basically trying to shop or do their jobs. The last thing that they want to deal with is this situation. And there's no defense for why that you are basically asking them to come into someone else's business without asking for permission first. If you want to make the argument that it's a public space and that you don't feel safe doing this out in the streets, first of all, maybe that tells you something about the dangers of what you're doing. And second of all, just ask for permission first. Because if your answer is they're just gonna say no, then there's probably no good reason for you to be doing this in their business in the first place. So do you wanna have a conversation about it or do you wanna call the police? Fine. You said what? You're fine. I know, I'm fine. Hey, you you ain't fine, bro. Yeah. That's me. Hey, excuse me, everybody. Oh, okay, excuse me. Wait. Next contestant on Dads Against Predators. Oh, Lake, wake, whatever you oh. are, buddy. Everybody's gonna see this in Dayton. Everybody's gonna see this. This man's here to meet a 13 year old girl. 
That's not the last time you're gonna hear that. This is basically Dapp's tagline. They just yell, excuse me everybody in the store, as if it wasn't bad enough that you're basically luring a predator into someone's business and then confronting them in the middle of it. You're now making a scene in the store, drawing customers' attentions to the fact that there's a predator walking around, which admittedly, most of the people who run businesses are not interested in being a part of. You was gonna take a 13 year old girl to McDonald's? My daughter. You got the red. Yeah. Okay, you should call the cops on. Okay, I need you to leave the store. Well, well I'm gonna stay until he leaves. Yes, you are, because I'm telling you that you're leaving. And okay, I'm is he leaving as well? Okay, that's not of your concern. So you wanna protect a 13 year old girl? I want you to imagine that you're a manager at a Kroger's and suddenly there's just this dude yelling throughout the entire store with a camera and a bunch of friends of his also holding cameras up to a customer. You don't know anything about that customer, you don't know anything about the story and you don't know what's going on, but you're the manager. You have to take action. So what do you do? You throw him out. That sounds reasonable, right? You want to protect okay, on camera. Okay. You're going to leave my store. What about him? If you don't leave the store. Yes. And I'm asking you to leave. Yes, what's your name? Stacy. Stacy wants to let a pedophile stay in the store and kick me out. You can leave the store. Is he going to leave the store? If you we can we can resolve this. Is he going to leave the store? Please leave my store. I don't joke. know anything about his situation, but I'll what show I do you. Know, I'll show you. You want to find out? But what I do know is you're creating You want to find out about his situation? You don't even want to find out. So you're going to let a pedophile stay in your store. How disgusting. Thank you and have a nice day. How disgusting, Stacy. You're disgusting. And here you go. He puts her on blast. He literally goes like, what's your name? Points the camera at her name tag. Like to just, I thought this video was supposed to be about exposing a predator. And now they're putting her on blast for doing her job. You're walking around with a t-shirt that says dads against predators. You're not a police officer. People aren't going to immediately accommodate your every need and go out of their way to take your word for granted. People don't immediately agree with you or think that you're right just because you're wearing a t-shirt. Let's get one thing straight. These predators are terrible people. What they're doing is terrible, but that doesn't mean what these predator catchers are doing is good either. But people cheer these guys on. They love these guys. And it's hard not to. It's hard not to cheer for them. It's hard not to be on their side. But try and put yourselves in the shoes of the police or the shoes of the manager because these insights, these perspectives will start to shed light on how things really are with these predators. Yo, Ty. What's up, brother? What you doing here? Can I help you? We try, right? Here you do. What you doing here, man? I got all your screenshots. So before you try to lie, just know I got all your stuff. Okay? I know you're here to meet a 14 year old girl. <sighs> Everything. 14 year old girl. Everything safe. You know what? Look, obviously the guy shouldn't have knocked the phone out of his hands, but this is where we start to see one of the big risks of this kind of situation. The police are trained what to do in situations like this, and they have a sense of authority. The guy would never whack the GoPro off of a policeman's chest. And it just goes to show how amateur they come across, whether or not they're doing everything right. The way that they appear to these predators definitely matters. And if they just seem like a bunch of dudes holding up cameras, it's more likely they're gonna have an outburst as a reaction. You hear me, a 14 year old girl. Hey, Scout's on it? Scout's on it? You're in the army. You say you're in the army. Obviously. A big part of why these videos are so popular is because there are moments like this that are just completely hilarious. There's no getting around it. When he says scouts honor, it's genuinely funny. And then you put up in the army. You got an 18% interest. Stands in the army, you're fucking pathetic. You're pathetic. You're a pathetic piece of shit. You're a pedophile. You're a pedophile, dog. You're a pedophile. I dare you. You just cleaning out your mat. You just cleaning out your mat. I dare you. Hey, listen. You just cleaning out your mat. Just like a stupid ass private. Listen, don't meet no 14 year old girls. Just like a stupid ass private. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Dude. Now, a little disclaimer here, DAP officially does not support people coming up to them during their catches and causing violence to the predators. But it's still their fault that it happened. 
and this isn't the only example of it happening on their channel and many other Predator channels. The truth is that a lot of these guys get a kick out of moments like this and they absolutely love it when people react to the situation because they can't. They're holding the cameras. They're unable to act because they have someone watching them. They're trying to keep up some sort of responsible image, but they certainly don't mind if somebody starts going haywire. So what are people in this neighborhood gonna What's think? What's going on? This man's here to meet a 13 year old girl. Right. You here to meet a 13 year old girl? Yeah. Right. Why are you here to meet a 13 year old girl? Would you like to tell him? I've told you guys three times. I'm right? asking you, how she old are you? you? I'm 20. Oh, Damn. Damn. Hey, she ain't with that, but that's some crazy. <laughs> Let's go, world star. Does that sound like somebody who doesn't condone violence? I don't know. To me, it sounds more like they're egging them on. And just wait. Oh shit, don't get hit. Hey, we gotta go. Then the predator almost gets hit by a car. Tell me what would happen if the guy gets hit by a car. Who's responsible then? What exactly are you gonna have to say then? Huh? Is it not gonna be your fault because the guy ran away? Because you're not the one who chased him? Threatening violence? It just goes to show how quickly these things can turn sour and what happens. That's the question when one of these guys just drops dead, when one of them has a heart attack or a seizure or something like that. You're not prepared for that. It doesn't matter how familiar you are with the laws to prosecute these guys. You're not prepared for the situations that could happen. It's abundantly clear that a lot of these predators don't take this whole thing seriously. They think it's all kind of just a joke. They don't really see themselves as a child predator. And while it varies and some of them really do break down into tears, some of them are such scumbags that it's to be expected that people love jumping on the bandwagon of shitting on them through this medium of dap. No big deal. I'm 24. I'm only 24. All right, all right. Give me a slap in the face. Or, the know. fuck you mean a slap in the face, bro? Everybody's gonna know, and everybody's gonna know your face, and know that your face likes to meet up with kids. That shit is not cool, dude. Okay. All right. You, th you think this shit's no big deal? No. You fucking I know. Bro, bro. No, I I know. I did wrong. I feel bad. You guys are trying to make me feel more like shit. Yeah. What, the what fuck? are you? That's what you out here this for. Is Don't worry. I won't show you too many more of these, but there is this one clip that I think you need to see. So we can move forward, bro. You can't, you're looking at me in my face and tell me I'm lying. No, Travis, no. I know that you were talking about kissing that girl. Travis, I know you were talking about sex to that 13 year old girl. Travis, why are you lying to me? In this particular catch, the predator involved in this situation is actually a close friend of the creator of DAP. He was even with them on a couple of investigations and apparently goes way back with these guys. He knows and understands how much these predator catches and stopping these people means to Josh. And so it's actually a really heartfelt video. Bro, I legitimately cared about you, bro. Since my fucking sophomore year in high school, I looked out, I looked out for you. D Bell was about to beat your fucking ass, and I stepped in from fucking beating his ass. All these fucking times that him and Terrence would fucking clown you and shit, I fucking didn't, bro. Watching Josh almost break down as he confronts his own friend, it's honestly tear jerking. But at the same time, it poses a very important question about the organization DAP. It asks what kind of oversight you guys have whatsoever. Because that means that on one of these catches, two of these catches, however many he was there for, there was a predator being caught and broadcasted on the internet by a bunch of dudes, and one of those guys was a predator himself. It just goes to show that it's strange to immediately trust these people. It's strange to trust their judgment. It's, it's strange to trust the way that they engage in these incredibly complex situations that we don't question why they don't immediately call the police, that we don't question how they react in businesses, that we don't question who's behind the camera that is pointing towards these predators. It's all very important. There's an entire other aspect to this whole thing, which is that DAP sells merchandise and has a Patreon, and so do all of these predator catcher channels. 
it makes total sense because a lot of these guys do this full time. They have entire organizations and they obviously have costs. Uh, but the addition of a financial aspect adds additional questions about the motivations of the people behind the camera. At some point, wouldn't it be more important to get a good video than it would be to do the right thing? There's this wild misconception that these kind of predator channels are just like neighborhood watches that are very specifically targeting certain crimes. But this couldn't be further from the truth. These guys are much closer to vigilantes. And the concept of the neighborhood watch is almost strictly and specifically not to be vigilantes, to fight crime without putting on a super suit. I'm looking at you, Phoenix Jones. The overall purpose of the neighborhood watch is to teach citizens how to report suspicious activity. They can have a more active voice in fighting crime in their neighborhood and foster a better relationship with the local police department. The idea is to focus on the particular crimes that hit your neighborhood the most and learn how to report them to the police, to recognize them when they're going on, and essentially build a stronger community so that when you see someone breaking into your neighbor's house, you know that it's not your neighbor because you know what car they drive, you know what they look like, or the neighbor across the street does. The point is there is a more connected sense of community and it's easier to spot outliers and identify larger problems in a community. The Neighborhood Watch is not about confronting criminals in any form. In fact, the first step to starting a neighborhood watch is always to contact local law enforcement and get things going, and obviously to check if there already is something like that in your area. Vigilante justice comes from the idea that the police is not doing a good enough job in handling a situation. Oftentimes the people who are targeted by vigilante justice are people who are seemingly above the law or can get away with anything, like rich and powerful people. But predators have somehow slipped into this category for people like Dap because they feel like the police doesn't do enough to prevent these people from causing harm to their children. And yes, I guess they really deserve it. They really deserve it. Even the guy who meets with them in the mall and pisses his pants, he deserves it. He really deserves it. All of them who are shivering and terrified deserve it. And all of them who are trying to weasel out of it and just get away as quickly as they can, they deserve it. They all deserve it. And on that note, I want to show you a clip from a different channel this time, Colorado Ped Patrol. Hey. What's up? Hey. What's going on, buddy? Listen, I'm not the police. I think you kind of know what's going on. Okay. Happen again. Okay. Can you take your keys out of the ignition just so you don't drive off on me? Can we have a step outside and talk? Sure. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm nonviolent. Okay. 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 Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. What are you doing here? So again, the more honest you are with me, the better it's gonna be for you. Okay. So am I gonna go to jail? Um, it depends on you. It depends on you. I don't have to call the police. If you if you're honest with me and you don't bullshit, I don't I don't have to call the police. You and, and again, just recording. Your protection and mine, okay? Gotcha. You were gonna meet somebody. How old was that somebody? Sixteen, I think. Come on, man. Let's be honest, buddy. Fourteen. Fourteen, 14 okay. Yeah. Do you talk to minors often? No, I don't. I'm Seven. Do you see my side of the story, bro? No, you're you're you. telling me you don't like kids. I got you. I got you totally. What would you do if somebody met with your 11-year-old nephew? I'd be there. Yeah, right? I'd be there. And you're very, very careful, man. I drove an hour and a half to get you. That's why it took us so long. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. But, uh, you know, um, but if to me, you have an easy out. Where's the 22-year-old at? It's a problem, bro. Yeah. I mean, do you see yourself as a pedophile? No. Do you think what you did today is a, a, a pedophile kind of thing? Yeah, fuck yeah it is. Look, you guys can come to my house. And this is, I'm not shooting you, honestly. You can come to my house. His phone is sitting. He even left his phone. That's why I, I, I can show you. I've been so, calling the... So, bottom line, bottom line. You were going to have sex with a 14-year-old tonight. What do you want me to do? You were going to have sex with a 14-year-old tonight, yes or no? Yes or no? That was my intention. That was your intention. Okay. You might want to talk to these fellas. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I personally remember yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this I've is had interesting. like two or three with you guys, um, okay. but we have 61 arrests throughout the Colorado. That's but awesome, uh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love it. Um, Let's do the right thing. Yeah, we came from Broomfield. And, if you can uh, save one or two kids, I mean, that's. Honestly, one. Yeah, absolutely. That's what My son went through this, and uh, that's why I do it. It's been eight months, and we've. Okay. 133 and 61 arrests. We got our 61st this morning. So it's been a busy day. Videos like this one remind me of the actual point of videos like this, which is to help children, which is to stop predators from hurting children. And this video, I genuinely think, does that. So if there is a way to do this, then it's with professionalism and safety at the center. And if that means you have to make a less interesting YouTube video because you called the cops much earlier or because you let them know beforehand or because they wouldn't let you film the scene in Kroger's, well, that's just the price you have to pay. You're not doing this for attention, right? You're doing this to stop predators like the guys you find in your videos. And look, DAP is not the only one. There are many of these channels and some of them are much, much worse than DAP. And one of these days, something terrible is gonna happen during one of these stings and I just don't know if these guys are going to be prepared for it. Let me know what you think. I don't know exactly how to feel about these channels and videos, but I genuinely am open to anybody giving me their two cents on the subject.